Today, I want to talk to you about run, baby, run. Hi, and welcome back to Sea Life TV, and I'm Daryl Chesser. Thanks for tuning in today. I appreciate you taking the time out to watch this video. Today, I'm going to be doing a reading from uh, one of my writings. It's called Run, Baby, Run. Run, Baby, Run. Yes, sir. First, let's pray. Father, thank you in Jesus' name for the Word of God today that the Word of God would go forth and it would encourage people, it would change minds and hearts, that the power of the Holy Spirit would rise up in people, or if they have not received Christ, that it would open their eyes to see Jesus. So, Lord, direct our speech, direct these words, not fancy words, but words of power, because they're the words of Jesus, they're the words of Christ. And we bless all of those who are hearing today in Jesus' name. Amen. Oh, and something else before we get started. I wanted to mention we have quite a bit of resources here, and I, I'm remiss to mention, mention it most of the time. You know, somewhere on the screen, you'll see Sea Life Ministries, uh, .org. Um, it's probably here, Sea Life Ministries org. And uh, there's a website there. It's not one of your like really, really fancy one, but it's a very utilitarian one. We're always going to have the most comp uh, recent video there. And then on the media and, and other testimonies and information and links uh, and about pages, contact pages. And then on the uh, media tab of the media page, there's an archive with uh, which I'm still working on. And right now there's over there's close to 700 sermons from 1975 on uh, from my dad and many other visitors and my mom when she pastored the church and even me, my sister. And so many people that are, it's just amazing resource. It's free. Go there, pick a folder, you know, scroll down, pick a folder, press play, and bingo, there she goes. And uh, also right below it, it's, uh, it says video archive. You click on that, and it's got the archive of all of our Sea Life TV videos, uh, Mom and Debbie and me and many others uh, that have been uh, taped, and they're archived there for you. So please feel free to use that resource and also... Uh, we have a page completely dedicated to that called SeaLifeTV.org. Thank you. Oh, <clears throat> on the webpage, I just wanted to mention, uh, I'm not appealing for money. I'm just simply saying I I'm always remiss. If you want to be a part of this, if you want to share um, in, in, in how the word's going out, in, in you know, just get a part of the action, that's fine. The Lord takes care of our needs. This is not an appeal for money. But I, I kind of felt last time that, you know what, I, I should at least give people an opportunity. If they wanted to be a part or give an offering, that's their business. Do it if the Lord moves on your heart. If, if you don't, please, please don't. Go ahead and listen to the videos and enjoy them. Get ministered to. But there's a, a link down there on that web page that'll say, you know, giving. And it's through uh, PayPal. So you can do credit cards, a debit card or the PayPal account, many different ways. Anyway, I appreciate it. And now back to the business. <clears throat> Today's reading is called Run, Baby, Run. Some amazing scriptures uh, in, about Jesus in the New Testament and what some people saw. Jesus and the boys had just crossed over the sea to Gennesaret, or Gennesaret, however you call that. And it all broke loose, man, as soon as they hit the shore. Let's read here in Matthew chapter 14, verses 34 through 36. When they had crossed over, they came to the island of Gennesaret. And when the men of that place recognized him, they sent word to all the surrounding country and brought to him all who were sick and begged him that they might only touch the hem of his garment. And as many as touched it were made perfectly well. Jesus could go nowhere without God's grace and love and mercy flowing out of him like a river. The entire Bible, including the Gospels, is about God showing himself to anyone who would bother to recognize him. God showed himself to the world through his son, Jesus Christ, to tell them he loves them and wants them saved and whole. 
Moses recognized one day that a bush was burning and was not being consumed. Now, this is a miracle. I mean, why is this not burning up? God was waiting for Moses to recognize him, to come, to inquire about him. Jesus went across the sea that day in this uh, story in Matthew and to see if men would recognize God, his father, their father, in the works he, Jesus, had been doing. Those men had obviously heard stories about the man from Galilee and the marvelous things he had done. But that day, Jesus stepped out of the boat, their eyes were open to recognize him, and they went running to every village and hamlet, bringing all who were sick to see Jesus. Anyone and everyone who touched the hem of his garment was made whole. How about us? Have I recognized Jesus in my situation today, in my sickness or lack or despair? Have I seen him? Have I recognized him? Is there a burning bush anywhere? Is there, is there just something that I'm going, oh, yes, Jesus. Our Father's door is always open. Jesus Christ is preached all over the world and the internet and on, and on almost every street corner in America. Yet it seems we don't really recognize him anymore. It's just kind of, eh. God loves you and me today. He loves the whole world. His ears and eyes search the whole world, the scriptures tell us, for any who have seen or heard something that they begin to recognize Jesus or the Father, who he is and what he can do to anyone who will stop and take notice and go, hey, that's interesting. You're saying my sins can be forgiven? Hold on a second. You're saying that my body can be healed? Wait a minute. Are you saying God can help, help me supply, get supplied, you know, in, in my shortcomings, in my debt and lack and poverty? Or what are you saying? Are you saying God can give me eternal life? I, I want to hear more. I'm interested in that. I know what these guys out there say. I know they don't believe this, as I say often, sky God and his son, Jesus. I know they don't believe in this. I know they think it's illogical. But dude, nothing they've done helped me. Their medicines didn't heal me. You know, their wisdom didn't solve my finances when people were stealing it, whether through inflation or higher taxes or or higher interest rates, and on and on and on. I need help. I need a savior. I need something. I want to know more. See, now that's what the burning bush was. The burning bush, I don't know. We're not told how long it had been out there. But Moses, you know, he'd run to the backside of the desert to hide, and, and he was just doing his thing. And then all of a sudden, one day, it's like, you know, burning bush, who cares? In a desert? It's dry. Things happen. Ask California. Ask Texas. I used to live in Texas. You know, the ground burns, whether it's by help with somebody throwing a match out or lightning. or It's just, it's, it's a very bad situation in the desert. Things burn. That wasn't unusual. But what was unusual is the bush was not being consumed. It wasn't being burned up. And so when he turns to take notice of it and he walks over there, imagine, not only is it not being burned up, the bush is speaking. Whoa! Okay. We are still little children in God's eyes. We still need our Father more than ever. And he still answers the cry of those who recognize who he is and what he greatly desires to do for us through Jesus Christ, his Son. In fact, what he has already done at the cross of Calvary, through the broken body and the blood spilled. God has done that for us. The people of Genesaret never heard a word about being worthy or how to get God to show up or the 10 steps to healing and provision or the immediate obedience that was needed to please God and receive. I'm not mocking these things. I'm simply saying it's not in his sermons. There. We're not told one word, if any, in that occasion that Jesus spoke to them. Except maybe 
do it. I mean, that's kind of it. You know, when they asked the question, after they went crazy, ran all over the place, they recognized him. They'd heard something. Somebody had come back and told some stuff. And he steps on the shore and, whoa, it's on, brother. They're dragging people from all over the countryside. And they're bringing him and saying, just let him touch the hem of your garment. And Jesus said, do it. So he has not given anyone any qualifications. The only qualifications given that day were the people themselves. When they said, let us touch the hem of your garment. They could have followed the, the example of the, uh, the centurion back in the Gospels, who just said, hey, I don't need to touch you. I don't even need you to come here. Just send the word. But they set the qualifications. And he goes, okay, whatever qualifications you set, I'll meet that. I'll meet you. I want you healed. I want you provisioned. I want you to know God loves you. See, Jesus in the scriptures we see him in the scriptures. We listen for him in sermons. We keep our eyes open because he is stepping into our situations today. Faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word. Whether it's you're reading the word or seeing or hearing the word in, on television or on a tape, or you're speaking the word yourself, somebody's talking to you about the word, but hearing the word and seeing and reading the word and hearing the word and hearing, faith is coming. Faith is coming, what? Faith is coming that Jesus Christ, that broken body and his spilled blood, it is the answer to everything. It is our food and our drink. It is our strength. It is our supply. It is our healing. It is our, it is our salvation. It is our eternal life. Faith in Jesus Christ. My advice, run, baby, run. Get to Jesus. Get to him. Take everything he is giving and more. Go get your family. Go get your friends. Heck, go drag your enemy if you have to and get him to Jesus. Sorry, I think I see someone. I see, I think I see Jesus. I gotta run. I'll see you next time.